everyone on YouTube, this is Zachary, and I'm going to be demonstrating something a little different today. Um, it's an iPhone app, and what this is, is it's an app called Alchemy, and um, Alchemy is actually a desktop plugin for things like Pro Tools and GarageBand and Logic and whatnot. And um, it's a very cool synthesizer that you can make really interesting sounds with, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But what I'm going to be demonstrating today is the iOS version of Alchemy. So this is going to be on my iPhone. And um, it's pretty, it, it's a lot like the desktop version from what I've heard. I've never actually used the uh, desktop plugin, but it, uh, when looking at things online, it's a lot like... Um, it's a simpler desktop version, basically, on the iPhone. And it also happens to be completely accessible using VoiceOver, which, for those who don't know, is the iOS screen reader. Um, so I can, I can use the iPhone. So I'm going to get into it. So I've got the app open. And when you first install it, it's a free app, by the way. And when you first install it, um, you're going to get a tutorial and it's going to be installing some things. Um, it's going to be installing the Alchemy Core sound library. And when that's done, you can either go ahead with a tutorial or you can skip it. And I've skipped it um, when I installed it. So I've got the app open and it's at the main screen and I've got a new song. So at the upper left, menu button. we have the menu button. And as you uh, heard, voiceover just told me it was a menu and it's a button. Now, I'm going to be flicking to the right because that's the way that you control the iPhone if you're using voiceover. But you would just um, touch the screen to activate these buttons. And I'm going to be using some different gestures, but don't mind that at all. It's all right. So I'm going to flick to the right. Play button. Now we're on the play button. And I'll get to that a little bit later because this has a really cool four track recorder in it um, that you can make loops with, which is pretty awesome. Then you can export them to your computer. And they'll go to the right. Record button. And we have the record button, which is self-explanatory. I'll go to the right again. Previous preset button. Now, this has a very nice sound library um, from the factory when you get this. And um, this is the previous preset button, so you can jump between presets very easily if you don't want to go into the pre uh, preset menu. But if I flick to the right again... Preset. Lush Meadows. Open sound library and presets. That is where you would actually tap to um, open the preset browser where you can look through the library of sounds. And you can get additional sound libraries as well. I've gotten a couple and I'll demonstrate how to do that uh, a little bit later on. Now if we flick to the right again, next preset button. We've got the next preset button. Flick to the right again. Selected. Track one. Lush Meadows. Keyboard button. Now this is uh what track is selected. And it told me that it was track one. It was selected, what preset it was using, and that it was using the keyboard. Now there are two ways of controlling sounds in alchemy. If you're using uh, melodic sounds, you would use the keyboard, just like it said there. But if you're using uh, drum sounds, if you've got a drum kit loaded, you'll be using drum pads. So just a little hint there. Now if I flick to the right again. Track two, dance kit, drum pads, button. Now this is the second track, and there is a dance kit loaded. Um, this is a new song, so it's a blank slate. There's nothing that I've done in this. This is all from the factory. And this is a drum kit, and if I were to tap on this, I would select that track. But I won't do that right now. I'll do that a little bit later on. So if I flick to the right again. Track three, nosier, keyboard, button. We have track three. Now if I flick to the right again. Track four, crescendo strings, keyboard, button. We've got track four. Now if I flick to the right one more time. Heading not found. Oops, sorry about that. If I flick to the right again. Timeline, no recording available. Now this is the timeline, and 
Um, I guess if you're sighted, you can uh, scrub back and forth through this, and you can move through different parts of the song. You can't do that if you're blind. Um, so this is more for informational purposes. VoiceOver will tell me um, how many bars the recording is, and if there's no recording available, like you just heard, it will tell me that there is no recording available. Now if I flick to the right again... Remix pad. X axis 0.85. Y axis 1.0. Drag to change. This is something that if you've ever used the desktop version of Alchemy, you'll recognize right away. This is the remix pad. And for those of you who don't know what that is, I'll explain right now. Each preset in Alchemy has eight variations. And what this remix pad allows you to do is it will let you morph between each variation. So what you can do is as you're playing a sound, you can touch on the remix pad and um, it will morph between each variation in a preset. And I'll get to that a little bit later. It's really, really cool how that works. So if I flick to the right again. Scale, see normal, button. This is the current scale that we're using on the built-in keyboard. Now, you can hook an external keyboard up to this as well, but we're going to be using the built-in one as I don't have an external keyboard to hook up to this right now. So the scale will let you uh, go between many different scales, and um, it's pretty cool. I'll sh show you that a little bit later. You can also change the key there as well. So if I look to the right again... Chord button. This is the chord button, and what this lets you do is if you were to tap on this, it will um, let you play chords just by pressing one finger on the keyboard. So if I tapped on this once, I'll do this now. Selected. Major. It's going to be playing a major chord every time I hit one key on the keyboard. If I tap it again. Selected. Minor. It's going to be playing a minor chord. And if I tap it one more time. Chord. It's going to uh, go back to off. So it's not going to play any chords. He has to do that manually. But that makes it a little bit easier if you're doing um, like a lot of chord-based things. If you're using a pad, for example, and you want to do a chord, um, you can do that very easily if that's the way that you like to work. So if I flick to the right again... Sticky keys. Button. This is pretty cool. This is called sticky keys. And what this lets you do is if you want to hold a note down for a long time, and if you're going to be using like a pad, for example, this is something that you might want to do if you want it to play throughout the entire loop. You could press this button, and what it will do is each time you press a key on the keyboard, um, it will stay held down. It will not, uh, when you release your finger, it will not stop the sound. And it will keep doing that until you either hit the sticky keys button again, or until you tap the note again on the keyboard, then it will stop the sound. And this is pretty cool if you're doing pads, again, like I said, or if you're using drum loops, for example, and you don't want to have to hold your finger down on a key. I'll demonstrate this a little bit later on. So if we flick to the right again. Bend note button. This is something that is in the pro version of Alchemy, and there are two versions of Alchemy. I'll get to that a little bit later. I'm using the pro version, obviously. Um, and what this will let you do is it will let you pitch bend the notes by sliding your fingers across the keys on the keyboard. Um, if you're using, if you don't have this on, um, and you slide your fingers across the keys on the keyboard, it's not going to bend the notes. It's just going to play one note at a time. Um, but if you have this on, it will continuously glide through the notes, which is pretty cool if you're doing um, like guitar work and you want to create some pretty cool textures there. I'll, I'll do that a little bit later as well. If we go to the right again. BPM, 120, adjustable. Tap or drag to change. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. This is the uh, beats per minute, the tempo. And um, this is for the sequencer. So when you're recording and playing back loops, you can adjust the tempo there. Now if I go to the right again. Volume, 100%, adjustable. Drag to change. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. This is the volume for the current track they have selected. So when you're recording, it's going to be very useful to adjust the volume from here. 
there are two places that you can do this. There is uh, this, you can adjust the volume right from the main, the main screen, or if you go to the menu up top and then you tap on the mixer, you can adjust the volume for all four tracks from there without having to switch between them, which is pretty handy. And if I flick to the right again, Octave left button. we have the octave, so you can change the octaves on the keyboard. Unlock keyboard button. Now, I'm not really sure what this does. I think, and I'm not going to do this because um, I don't, I'm not too sure what it does, but I'm pretty sure that if you were to tap on this, you could zoom the keyboard in and out, and um, I think you could change the note range that way, but I'm not going to do that because that I don't think that's really friendly to voiceover, so I'm not going to try that. Now, if I flick to the right again, Octave right button. we have the octave right button, so you can move between your octaves, like plus and minus. And if I go to the right again, keyboard. we've got the keyboard. Now, um, uh, when you actually get on the keyboard, you would play it, obviously. But since I'm using voiceover and it's just moving through each item on the screen, um, it's going to flick to this item because it thinks it's an object when it's really not. Uh, but if I were to touch the bottom of the screen where the keyboard is,